you know one of the most Google questions last year was what is love? Well today on I Believe Now What, we're going to go over that and give you what the Bible says on it. Because honestly, that's where we know the real love comes from. If this is your first time here, my name's Tim Perko, and I believe now what is a ministry that is just geared toward growing the body of Christ, the church, the people, the Christians in grace and knowledge. So our question today is what is love? Well, from the Christian standpoint, we know exactly what love is. We need only look to 1 John 4.8. 1 John 4.8 specifically says that God is love. The Apostle Paul wrote about love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the famous wedding chapter that everybody knows so well. He said that love is patient, that love is kind, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. He also said in verse 8 that love never ends. That being said, in today's culture, love has been redefined into human standpoint terminology and honestly has been abused and dragged through the mud. The reason why the definition of love keeps changing so much from culture to culture and age to age is because obviously we are humans in sinful flesh and because of that sinful flesh it took something like the word love and has just warped it and changed it into so many different forms. But typically the word love that we're used to saying in the English language isn't even the exact word of love that Paul was talking about in his epistle or that John was writing about in 1 John, but instead it was a different word. So some of you might know the New Testament's original language is actually ancient Greek. That was the common language of the day. And the Greek were honestly, they had many different words for things that we use in the English language that we might only say one. A great example of that is love. While we say love for many different things, such as, hey, I love you, man, or man, I really love that milkshake and fries, or when you tell your parents or a related person, I love you, as opposed to how you say I love you to your wife. We have so many different forms of one word. Well, the Greek, they broke it down to six. You have a different word for sexual love, a different word for love that would be considered a friendship type love. There's a word for playful love, such as when little kids are playing together or just generally hanging out with your friends. There's a word for long-standing love, like the word that would describe a married couple that's been together for 50 years. You even got a word for self-love, the pride of your own self, being obsessed with yourself, going after your own selfish ambitions. And lastly, you have the love that Paul and John were talking about in the Bible. This word is often known as agape love. And I'm sure many of you heard this from a famous Super Bowl commercial a few years back. This type of love is a selfless love and often regarded in any type of culture as the highest form of love that you could possibly have. The old King James version of the Bible used to put the word down here as charity because essentially in the Greek, that's almost what it means. Charity, it's selfless giving. It has nothing to do with yourself, nothing to do with pride, but taking something away from you so that way others others can have it. That's the selfless love Paul and John are writing about. So one of the big questions is, is how do we perform in this love? How do we perform in this agape love as Christians, as people? Now it would be easy for me to sit here and say exactly what to do, but honestly this type of love really can only be found in Jesus Christ. Sure, people display some characteristics of this love throughout their life, but this true love is found only within Jesus Christ. I could sit here and go on and on and on and give you a 30, 40 minute sermon based upon this love, but I think it's best if you honestly read it for yourselves and learned and see what the Bible has to say on it. Go ahead, read 1 Corinthians 13 in its full context. Read 1 John chapter four, and this will start a study for yourself that can just build upon each other. Who knows what amazing stuff you're gonna find when you go ahead and do a nice, in-depth reading and studying of these two chapters. To aid you in your studies, I highly recommend getting yourself a topical Bible. A topical Bible is exactly what it sounds like. It's a Bible where you can find all the verses on a particular subject, meaning one, love. I use this all the time for my sermon prep or when I'm studying or just when I'm generally curious about something. 
A topical Bible will add to your study so much better when you're going over this topic of love. Not only that, but a good commentary can also open up your understanding. Now, I would suggest spread your commentary around. You don't have to buy an actual book, and there's plenty of apps that give commentaries. Just make sure you do your reading beforehand and make sure you're reading a reliable commentary. And it's always good to compare commentary. Don't just get stuck on one author or one commentator's words, because then you can kind of get sucked into to maybe they had a personal agenda. And lastly, I would highly suggest downloading a type of app that has a interlinear Bible in it. You can buy a hard copy of an interlinear Bible, but I personally like to use an app. Most people love Blue Letter Bible. I personally use the Bible Hub app, but it has an interlinear Bible and a concordance so you can see what the Greek word is and then do an in-depth study on your own so you don't have to just take my word for it. But overall, hopefully I answered your question about what is love and I hopefully I inspired you to go ahead and do your own study into it. This is Tim with I Believe Now What. Until the next time, God bless.